if you do not have these things set, no matter how good your creative is or how good your product is, it's very hard for your ads to work. Everybody's going to have a unique paid social strategy and what works yeah. for somebody isn't going to work for everybody. Everyone's looking for a silver bullet. There's right. no silver bullets in this world. And where do you think people should be spending their paid dollars? Where do you think? You well, know? I would say- I, only, I still believe in like, you know, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> if your creative is two, below 2% 2 at a uh, prospecting level, there's a problem in your prospecting creative. Hundreds of direct-to-consumer brands use Tatari's platform to buy and measure TV ads just like digital. They have deep publisher relationships that give you the best CPMs on linear and streaming TV. Check out their three-minute demo video at tatari.tv slash limited supply. Okay, episode six, season five, Nick. Halfway. Big one today. This halfway, halfway through. Point. And we're talking about social media, paid yeah, advertising. Paid uh, excited to talk about this. This is going to be a big episode or something that's really important, at least. Yeah. So I'm excited to get into it. We, uh, we were supposed to do it last week, but we didn't get to it. We didn't get into it. Um, I, there's a lot of things to talk about. Um, I guess before anything, what I want to say is that everybody's going to have a unique paid social strategy and what works yeah. for somebody isn't going to work for everybody. Agreed. What worked for me at Native is not like everyone's looking for a silver bullet. There's right. no silver bullets in this world. Um, you got to try really hard to make this work. And so, you know, some people will be on DTC Twitter being like manual bidding only works. Why is everyone not doing manual bidding? Some right. people will be like, why isn't everyone doing auto bids? The, the reality is everything like, you know, what works for you may not work for somebody else. So take everything with a grain of salt. Yeah, and try to because, understand like the frameworks behind what's happening here. That's right. Versus the, the minor tactics. That's right. All right. Where should we start? Um, let's start with Facebook. All right. Um, I'll tell you what I like, what I think is a lot of people don't do a good job of is understanding their numbers. Like I'll ask people, what's your CPM? What's your click through rate? They don't have a good funnel set up to understand what metrics they should be tracking. And why, why do you like those two numbers? I like more than the, like when I look at Facebook ads, I set it up like, you know, you can default, you can change the yeah. tables and I'm like, show me my CPM, my CTR. I set the whole funnel up. Yeah. CTR, CPC, CP view, CP add to cart. CP initiate checkout, CP purchase. Yep. So that way I can be like, if there's a problem, where along this funnel is there yeah. a problem? And like, you know, I was trying to think, is there a rule where you can say, whatever your cost per add to cart should be 2X your cost per view, and that should be 4X your cost per click? I was trying to get into that. And I looked at a bunch of ad uh, accounts before uh, we were recording today or earlier today, and I was like, there isn't this rule ac across a bunch of ad accounts. Like, Agreed. you know, if you have an $80 product, your cost per ad to cart is going to be a lot higher than your cost per view because people are going to get to your pet product and be like, should I buy this? This is too expensive yeah. versus a $12 product where they're going to be like, I can add to cart, no big deal, it's 12 bucks. Yeah, it's also, um, so probably like two, three months ago, um, one of uh, the companies we're both invested in had an issue where they they were seeing their cost of uh, customer acquisition went through the roof, and um, and so I did this thing. I I went into their dashboard and I set up the you know CPM CTR. Yep. Then number CPs, of views yeah. cost per view, number of add to carts uh, mm -hmm. cost per add to cart, and what we found is that the cost of add to cart had like eight x in price. And so immediately we were like, okay, now we know where the issue is. Yes. And then we go to the site and uh, we f and then we started running the Pixel Helper in Chrome and we saw that, oh, when we hit add to cart, it actually fires eight times for each of the items in the cart because you're building a set. And, um, and we found our issue. But had we not used that view, and they hadn't before that I jumped in, they were, you know, for two days, they didn't know where that uh, issue was stemming from. It's so helpful because as you go through, as, as like this business, as your business continues, like, you know, a week or two weeks, in, like not a week or two weeks, but months or years into this, yeah. you can be like, I have a problem. What happened oh, six months ago? And you can be like, was my cost per add to cart 3X my cost per view? Right. And I was happy with that six months ago. What is it today? Where is, like, is the problem at add to cart? Is the problem at initiate checkout? Where is the hole in my funnel or what's yeah. gotten worse? And oftentimes, like if it's years and you're spending a lot of money, it's just your cost, your CTR is down, your CPC is up, your CPM is up. Those are problems that aren't funnel, like those are funnel problems, but like harder funnel problems because you're going to have to deal with Facebook and yeah. customers and win them over. And they're not just necessarily problems where you're like, uh, I can, like, you know, I, there's a problem with my Shopify website. 
if uh, if your CPM is higher than normal or your CTR is lower than normal, uh, how do you like how do you interpret that? If it's for a day, I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, you know, things happen. Uh, just move forward. Yeah. If it's for a longer period of time, it's my creative is an issue. Yeah. Okay. It's a, especially like, um, you know, CPM. Uh, so I think there, there's a couple rules that I, a couple of rules that I actually do pay attention to, which was, and, and these are rules that I used when I was writing native ads. So they're super old. Yeah. And they these may are gut born rules. Anymore. And like, you know, rules that were true when the dinosaurs walked the earth. <laughs> yeah. One is I wouldn't spend more than $1,000 per million people in my audience per day in ads. So if my audience was 5 million people, I would only spend $5,000 per mm -hmm. day for that audience. I wouldn't spend more than that. That ha that was more relevant in days where there were look-alike audience and interest-based audiences than there are uh, broad-based audiences. But a lot of people are still doing bu uh, business as usual, BAU audiences, Facebook calls them, and look-alike audiences, including a bunch of ad accounts that I advise. And what's business as usual? Is non advantage plus shopping campaigns. Got it. Sorry, yeah. That my uh, I talked to a Facebook ad account rep and she used that term. Yeah. And I was like, what is BAU? And then I was like, okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, trying to I can't sound believe smart. I just did it the same I did the same <laughs> thing. Anyway, so like um, non -add to uh, advantage plus shopping campaigns uh, are called business as usual campaigns. A lot of people still use them. And there, in those instances, I wouldn't spend more than $1,000 per 1 million people in that audience. That's got one it. of the rules that I think about. The other rule I think about is if your click-through rate is below 2%, you have a creative problem, Agreed. like especially a prospecting. Maybe retargeting, I could understand, but if your creative is two, below 2% 2 at a uh, prospecting level, there's a problem in your prospecting creative. Um, so that's the second rule that I've got. Then I've got a rule with CPMs where I'm like, if it's above $20, you should start paying attention because something doesn't look right. Uh, I talked to some guy. Uh, I talked to someone, and they're like, "My CVM is sixty dollars," and I was like, "I don't need to know anything else about your ad account. So that you have a huge problem with your creative." Yeah. Like if you have a if you have a C, uh, CPM above forty dollars, look, there's special rules for you know for special businesses. I'm sure, uh, but forty dollars CPM is crazy high. Like I don't know Even what across you're doing. multiple like higher AOVs. You've seen that. Yeah, I, I've looked at AOVs to like $120. I've never seen CPMs north of $40, unless it's like very yeah. narrow prospecting campaign, or, or I'm sorry, retargeting campaign, or you're like, I sent out this email. Uh, like, oh, uh, so um, let me take one step back. Yeah, yeah. so for, uh, so my rules are, if your CTR is below 2%, you have a creative problem. Mm -hmm. If your CPM is above $20, you may have a problem with creative. If your CPM is above $40, you almost certainly have a problem with creative. Mm -hmm. And like the problem could be your audience is too narrow. That could be a CPM problem as well. It does not necessarily creative. I should say you have a problem. Could be your audience is too narrow. It could be that a lot of people are saying, don't show me this ad mm -hmm. because it's disgusting or offensive or people don't like it for some reason or the colors are bad or something. Um, and so those are some of the rules that I think about um, when I look through Facebook ad campaigns. Yeah. Um, and then my third rule was $1,000 per day per 1 million people in your audience if you're doing business as usual and narrowing your audience. And do these rules still hold today, like when you look at ad accounts? Um, the 2% certainly does and the CPM does. 1000 yeah. per day per 1 million audience, I think it holds. There's just, I don't see enough business as usual to be like, yeah, I'm sure this is the case. Yeah, yeah. But the other rules, I'm pretty confident are still true. Got like it. if you're looking at an ad account now, yeah. and so, does someone have a CPM above $40? Uh, yeah. They do. Yeah. Is it a narrow audience or a broad audience? Uh, it's an interest-based audience. It's a narrow. It's somewhat narrow interest. Is it performing audience. well or is it not? performing It is. Well? Yeah. Great a forty dollars CPM. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I've never seen a forty dollars CPM perform well because that just means that you have. Is it? It's a prospecting or a re no? You said it's prospecting. Prospecting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, See, th th this is a great exception to everybody or like things are unique to everybody. Yeah. Because uh, I've if I see a forty dollars CPM, I'm like a huge problem over here. Yeah, it is a narrow audience. Um, like, you know, it's an interest that is human psychology. That is the interest. Mm -hmm. So that could be why the CPM is higher. Does it say how big the audience is there? Uh, let me check. It says that the audience is, yeah, 30, 31 million to 37 million. That's huge. Pretty big. Yeah, that's that's 10% of America. I'm shocked that that CPM yeah, is that Yeah, that is high. a pretty high CPM then. And yeah, their CPA from that ad is doing well. Good for them. Yeah. Um, see, that's the thing where I'd be like, I, I, I would have an issue with it, and it seems like there is no issue. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess that goes back to the original rule that everything is ever unique to everybody. Because yeah, if I yeah. saw that, I'd be like, if I saw a forty dollars CPM on my ads, I'd be like, there's a problem here. Uh, I'd, I'd be like, hey, is there a Facebook issue? I'd go to like, you know, that Facebook page where they're like, yeah, there's yeah. an issue with Facebook ads I have right seen, now. Uh, I don't know who I was talking to last week, but they said 
so they, they were saying like their CPMs were something like a hundred bucks. And, um, and I was like, did you, you know, is it your creative? They're like, yeah. no, our click through rates like three, four percent. I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. Cause usually, you yeah. know, those are, uh, in Poorly. tandem, yeah. high CPM, low yeah. CTR. And, um, he was just like, I was like, have you tried a new ad account? Maybe, maybe it's just your ad account has like something on it that won't let it, you know, get lower CPMs. He said, we tried a new ad account. I think it's our domain. Like our domain is blacklisted by Facebook as, you know, I, I don't remember what company it was, but I, I, I think it was something that was kind of shady with like putting uh, before and after images on the same page they were driving to or using before and after ads, which are not allowed on Facebook. And uh, like their domain is just permanently jacked up with CPMs now. Really? Yeah. Did they I'll change their domain? I'd be like, we have to change this domain. We have to add code. I don't know if they did. Okay, yeah. I, that was my suggestion to them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if that's if that's what they believe, that is the solution to it. There is one other, like, there's one instance where I can see super high CPMs when your audience is super narrow. And this is one, one place where I think people should advertise is, um, let's say you do a Black Friday email. Anyone who's opened that email but has not made a purchase, yeah. if the sale is long enough, I'm gonna be like, great, uh, let me do a sale, let me r uh, run ads to you. And that audience could be small depending on how big your email list is. And as a result, your CPM could be really high. Yeah, totally agreed. Um, where do you think people should be spending their paid dollars? Uh, where do you think? You're gonna have a much better answer than well, that. Well, I would say- I, only, I still believe in like, you know, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mark. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I would say if you're spending less than 100K, I think you should almost entirely focus on Facebook. 100K a month. A month on okay. Facebook. Yeah. I think if you're spending. And what else should you focus on if you're doing less than 100K? If you're less than 100K, I think the only thing you should focus on, that's basically like what, 3K a day? Yeah. A little bit more than 3K a day. I think the only thing you should focus on is uh, creative. Like getting your CPMs and your click through, your click through, yeah, over two percent. Uh, your add to cart percentage should be high, uh -huh. and you should you should basically just focus on what is the because like when you're spending a hundred k, you're working with big levers, not small levers. Big uh -huh. levers meaning like the angle of the messaging and the positioning of your product, or uh, like for example with Jolie. You know, instead of calling it a shower head, you talk about hair loss being a problem. That's your big lever. It's like a big angle. Uh, another big angle, uh, big lever is the offer, and then the other big lever is um, landing page. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you focus on like these two or three big levers, and I think if you're spending 100k, that's all you focus on. You don't focus on anything else. No other channel. Forget Google. All you do is this. So let uh, so. Uh, okay, I'll disagree. I, I I don't agree with that, actually. Okay. And I'll say that uh, you need to start spending on Google branded AdWords, especially if you're a new business, when you're spending 15000 a month on Facebook. Really? Yeah, because let, like, pe people, yeah, good question. Uh, people are going to start searching your name. And yeah. uh, one, other people might, be, like if you're selling deodorant, other people might be bidding for deodorant and they're like, okay, I can't even find, it's SEO'd, it's not SEO'd at all. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's why. It's not SEO'd it at all. It makes sense if you're a brand new business. Yeah, if you're a brand new business yeah. and you're spending you 15 show up. Exactly, you won't yeah. show up. Google hasn't been like, yeah, this is a business that we actually care about and we have to show. So if someone searches native deodorant, even that won't show up unless you start paying for it. Yeah. Um, so I think you have to start spending on branded AdWords earlier um, although small, small amounts, like I think you could probably spend hundred K on Facebook ads a month and probably one K on Google ads or two K in Google ads just yeah. to defend your turf. Um, but I think otherwise you're right. I'd be like, if you're spending less than a hundred thousand dollars, I'd probably just focus on Facebook. Yeah. The other one I think is worth spending on if you've got some extra cash is TikTok, just because, and especially yeah. if you have search on too. Um, so I feel like TikTok is a cheap way to just get discovery and build that awareness that Facebook will then go clean up and sweep into the. Who have you seen? A, who who's done a good job on TikTok in your opinion? Jolie. Okay. Yeah, they've done a really good job on TikTok, and I think it's also. I mean, I think with TikTok, the harder part is uh, figuring out the creative that actually like fits the the platform of TikTok. Like if you if you scroll through ads on TikTok, most of them have comments turned off. Yeah, and that's because the ads don't fit what people want to do want to see on TikTok and they just get roasted and they're better off turning their ads off. Um the comments off. The comments yeah. off, sorry. And uh 
And if you look at uh, Jolie or some of the other companies that do TikTok well, they have their comments on and people are excited about the products or, you know, they don't feel like ads basically is kind of their secret sauce. Yeah. Um, okay. We talked a little, okay. So uh, just to sum up, um, you know, we talked about how you should look at ads, which is from like a CPM basis all the way to cost per, uh, per purchase. Yeah. We talked about some general rules, which I'm completely wrong about because you just pulled up an ad one second and you're like, no, this guy spends <laughs> case $40 by case. CPM. Um, there are two other things I want to talk about here. Uh, one is creative, but even before we get to there, um, is comments. Oh, I was just about to say comment moderation. Yeah. Like, you know, you talked about how people turn it off. Yeah. Um, that's probably not the best way to like handle comments. Agreed. Like, you know, you want to, you have to be super active when it comes to Facebook comments. Like you have to respond to anyone who has an issue. You got to hide comments. You got to delete comments. You got to ban people and you got to like promote your product through comments as well. Yeah. Um, and like I was looking at it and I saw Mary Ruth Organics, which is a brand that I really admire. And like someone had said something bad about their product and they responded in a great way. And I was like, I'm surprised that they don't hide this comment. Because when I think about comments on your Facebook ads, I'm like, this is someone who came up to your dry, to your garage and spray painted, you know, Moise is uh, stinky. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, this is my real estate. I'm paying for this real estate. I get to like, uh, even if I am stinky, I get to like wash that off. Right, yeah. You don't get to like uh, vandalize my real estate. Yeah. And so I'm surprised that people don't do this often enough or like, I don't think that they do this often enough. If you're spending uh, $20,000 a day on Facebook ads, you should probably be doing this four times a day. Yeah. If you're spending $3,000 in that Facebook ads, you should probably be doing it twice a day, right when you wake up and right when you're leaving the uh, you know, work. Agreed. So that you're like, look, all the people who've written bad things, I've like moderated. Yeah, I think when um, when I was at Hint, we were spending about $20,000 a day. We actually hired somebody full-time whose entire job was comment moderation. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, I remember seeing that if we didn't respond to comments, our CPMs would go up about 30 or 40% as a result of not responding to comments because you know somebody leaves like a bad comment and everybody has the opportunity to leave a bad comment, right? You sell something that has plastic in it, it's like all these people come and shame you for using plastic. You sell something that is uh, whatever, like people just shame you for no reason. The uh, and, USPS said it was delivered and it's not in my doorstep. I don't have it. You yeah. know, oh, I have a gated community and the guy came at 7 p.m. That's too late. Tell him to come earlier. Yeah, like, exactly. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that is literally my response. That exact tone. <laughs> I, I, I want to be like, oh, you need to call up Joe Biden, the head, the, like, you know, the federal, the, you know, federal government handles USPS. Yeah. Here's the White House phone number and ask him to tell the guy to deliver it. Earlier. Exactly. Don't fucking ask me. This is how packages work. You understand yeah. this, right? Yeah. The guy shows up when he shows up. If yeah. you're not happy with that, pay for the faster service. Exactly. So I think every comment needs to be responded to uh, every day, no matter what. That is like a... Um, is a like or a thumbs up like a response or no? Uh, no. I think it needs to be responded. And I think, uh, so like, you know, uh, we use uh, this service called Oceans where we get people from Sri Lanka as employees. And and we have one person now whose entire job is comment moderation. And she'll catch things, like she'll catch customer service issues before they become issues, which is the best part. But um, every comment needs to be responded. So what if someone says, just ordered? Five people just message you, uh, like comment today and say, just ordered. What do you say? Oh, thanks that's for great. Your support. Yeah, you would respond with a GIF or yeah. thanks for the support. Yeah, okay, we can't gosh. wait for you to get it. Okay. You know, check this out. Yeah, yeah. This is what you do when you get it. Um, and then the people who have questions, a lot of times your existing customers will see that jump in and respond. If they don't, then you hit them with an official response. And then the people who complain or leave something somewhat negative, you still respond, but then you hide the comment. Yeah. And when you hide it, the net new people won't see it except that person's friends, which is fine. And then if there's somebody who's just being a dick, you know, HBD, hide, block, delete in yeah. that order, yeah, yeah. you hide it. And then it grays out, then you block them, and then you delete it, and they never come back. Yeah. Um, if you hide it and delete it, then they will come back, and they'll say, why are you deleting my comments? And those people are also a bad look on the ad. So you just got to hide, block, delete. And, um, and this works especially well when you're doing whitelisted ads. So if you respond from a combination of the brand page and the influencer – uh, on whitelisted ads, it's like people feel like, you know, they're talking to a celebrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is really good. Um, 
I think you're right about all those things. You got to respond to everyone. Even if they, if they say something good, you got to respond. It's wonderful. Even I think even if someone asks a question and another customer answers a question, you still got to come in and say, Sharon, thanks so much for, uh, you know, saying that for like, you know, answering Julia's question. Yeah. You're amazing. Like, you know, uh, you're, you're awesome. A hundred percent. Uh, so I think e no matter what, basically every thread needs, uh, you know, Nick Sharma, uh, or Sharma brands response. Yes. Like, uh, I, I'm just Sharma brand ad. Yeah. Um, I'm so, and like, I think that people should be, you know, I know that I feel like there's a debate going on as to whether you should hide or not hide, uh, ad, like bad comments. Uh, again, I think it's your yeah. real estate. You're it's paying for it. property. Yeah, in Malibu. Yeah, that's and right. And somebody throws a grenade. Yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. gonna leave it there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, throw it back at them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, All right, so, I have yeah. four other things. That, okay, yeah. So comment moderation is one of the things. Yeah. That uh, and this is outside of creative, but there, there's uh, actually five other things I'll put. Uh, there's five five other things in addition to comment moderation that I think. If you do not have these things set, no matter how good your creative is or how good your product is, it's very hard for your ads to work. Um, so number one is uh, email. We kind of touched on this in the last episode, mm -hmm. but you have to have email flows that follow up to the offer that somebody is seeing and follows up to the same angle. So when people, if you're running people to a specific landing page, you tag them in Klaviyo that they came in with this page you put them in a specific flow, and uh, you hit them with the same angle. The same benefits they saw in the ads is what they see in email or in their PostScript text they get from you as yep. well. Second one is fast load speed on the site that you're driving to. If you have a, you know, if you have a, a four second load speed, like no matter it's how over. great your product is, how good the deal is, nothing's working. And what um, is a good load speed? Like under a second. Wow. Yeah. There's uh there's not too many places you can do it. Unbounce is really good to do it. Okay. Um, so for our hooks pages, we prefer Unbounce because it immediately loads. Um, and then the other one that I've seen, Jolie just started using this called Nostra. Have you seen this? Yeah. Loads insanely fast. They cache the whole site. Um, a third one is benefits that speak back to the audience you're going after. So if you're targeting, um, you know, if you're targeting moms and you're selling deodorant, and you're talking about, uh, you know, um, smell like an athlete or like, you know, this is what the athletes use. It just won't work. You have to have consistency across the audience you're targeting and the positioning you're putting. Um, actually, the next one is also good positioning. So like good offer, good incentive and good messaging. And then the last one that always gets forgotten, and this is always the funniest one because it's the most obvious when you hear it, is you need to have social proof in uh, – about five main places. One is on the page you're driving to, whether it's your website, your PDP, your landing page. You need to have uh, social posts, unboxing videos, uh, quotes, reviews, some sort of social proof. Second place, or second, third, and fourth, TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram. So when somebody goes to your Instagram profile, you should have a highlight that says reviews or community or uh, fan love or something like that, which signals to somebody, oh, I can click here and see what real people have posted that these guys have reposted, because that's not fake. Second one is uh, YouTube. So if somebody searches on YouTube, you know, if I'm about to buy an Eight Sleep mattress, I'm probably going to go to eight, uh, to YouTube or Google and search, is Eight Sleep legit? And if YouTube pops up, that's the best type of reviews you can get. And then the shorter form of that is TikTok. So if I search Cadence Capsules and TikTok, I want to see what people actually think about it, not just uh, what the brand is saying. Yeah. And then the last one is Google. Like when I search this in Google, what am I going to see? And um, that's where you get bloggers to write about it. You get different publications to write about it. There's ways to hustle and get articles that show up on the first page. It's not that you just, you know, the, the answer isn't to hire a PR firm for 20 grand a month. There are definitely ways to get articles that show up. And uh, this is the one thing that people forget. And then they're like, I'm selling a $80 hair treatment thing and I'm not getting any sales, but this is the best thing ever. And it's like, well, it seems like a scam because when you Google it, there's nothing there. Or you search it on TikTok, there's nothing there. What's a way to get those articles? You just know a guy? Yeah, either you know a guy. Uh, there are like some kind of shady-ish services that exist where – you know, I can say, I want to get on Vogue uh, Vogue Australia and I'll pay three grand 
and it just appears. You and I both know both the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, then there's, uh, and then there's hustling, which is, I think, the better way to do it because then you build a relationship with a blogger who actually has a relationship. Um, there's also like my subscription addiction where you can pay them a monthly fee and they have a network of bloggers you can get in touch with or uh, their own site, my subscription addiction. Um, so yeah, there's there's different ways to do it. Uh, I think at the very least though, it's like set up your social profiles, get those ranking, um, start posting from Medium. Um, you know, all these sites that have like quick SEO juice, I think get on those and then yeah, and then start reaching out to people. It's just a, a you know, you're kind of tackling it one by one. Yeah, I think the social proof is a great uh, a great point to mention. Like you need social proof and all of those things. I think the YouTube reviews is really interesting. It's something that you didn't need five years ago, but it's something you definitely need today, which is yeah. when someone's going to buy your product, they're almost going to do, they're almost always going to do two things. One, Google it, and two, look it up on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, you want the first five listings on YouTube to be like, this is great. We really love this product. Right. Um, one of my friends had a business where the first one was uh, paid for by a competitor of theirs. Yeah. It was a big influencer. And they're like, actually, this business sucks. They like, you know, um, they're like, I got less value than I thought I would out of this. So like they, it was like, uh, if your friend's business is Casper, it was like purple said, we're going to review Casper, but it's shit. No, they paid oh. an influencer to say, I reviewed Casper and it was shit. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's warfare. Yeah. yeah. And um, they're like, you know, the Casper in that instance, and it wasn't Casper, yeah. uh, was like, we, you know, we get messages about this all the time on our, uh, you know, on wow. our customer service inbox where people are like, what the fuck? I watch this video and, you know, this influencer says you suck on YouTube. Damn. And so that's um, brutal. That is really hard to get over. Can they do anything about that? They, uh, th you know, it's hard because they're like, look, they're like, this person is getting paid from the other person, but it's hard to. You could sue them yeah. and really get into it and be like, did this person pay you to do this? Are you getting some sort of affiliate? Did you disclose that? All that kind of stuff. But like, you know, who wants to go through all that shit? Yeah. You know, one of I the other like alternatives is, one of the other alternatives is you get somebody to do the same thing to yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. And then like, you're like, hey, look, you want to play this game? I feel like you would go through that. Game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very possible. Yeah. Uh, ironic that you mentioned that today. <laughs> you can't just rely on paid social and PPC for growth. Hundreds of brands like True Classic, Daily Harvest, and Manscaped have turned to TV advertising using Tatari's platform, and they're absolutely crushing their acquisition goals. Many of my own clients at Hooks also use Tatari. We use them while I was at Native2, and I can tell you that their team is awesome and the measurement is just like digital, so you'll see site visits, purchases, or even installs from TV. Check out their three-minute video at tatari.tv slash limited supply. <laughs> the other thing that uh, I think you're right about, it, like the other thing that we did at Native was we got video reviews from all these customers where we're yeah. like, hey, um, we want you to, we're like, we're going to give you a $20 gift certificate. You got to take a video of yourself, uh, point your iPhone at yourself, take a video, hold up the stick, tell us what you use before you use Native and what like why you like Native, when you switched, why you switched, all that kind of stuff. Has to be at least 30 seconds no longer than like 90 seconds or two minutes or something, or maybe yeah. it was minimum minute, less than two minutes. And you know, we'd, and now we're like, we'll give you a $20 gift card, which is, you know, Amazing. It doesn't cost you, it costs yeah, you $10. $4 in cogs. Exactly. And so um, we got, you know, hundreds of reviews like that. And uh, we post them all over the place. And, you know, no one could be like, this looks like a fake review. Cause it's some yeah. woman sitting at her house with her kids sometimes be, being like, I'm Ashley, this is my two-year-old John. I switched to Native after I had a baby. Here's a stick of deodorant. I really love it. And you're just like, okay, there's hundreds of these. Yeah. This must be legitimate. And, um, you know, it was legitimate. It's actually a real customer talking yeah. about the product. And that was like a, a form of social proof that was really valuable because one, you could upload it to YouTube and use it yourself as like a defense mechanism, as that shield. Mm -hmm. And two, you could put it everywhere you could use it in emails and email campaigns to show that it was real. And you could put it on your website and people are like, well, these can't be fake. Like, you know, no one's hiring this random, like so many random people uh, to, to do this. So that was really effective form of social proof. Yeah, that is awesome. That's a great incentive too. Yeah, like, you know. Uh, Cause do a, especially because it's a consumable product. How would you do it if it was a one-time, like you're buying a set of cookware? Well, we're going to send you a $50 uh, Amazon gift certificate. Yeah, agreed. Uh, you know, uh, let's get going. Totally. Send us the video. Uh, you got to hold it in like, you know, a bunch of stuff. Or you could even say, I'll give you a $100 gift certificate to buy again at Hexclad or right. Careway or whoever it is, right, right. depending on what your AOV. $100 off $200 order, so it costs you nothing. Right. 
Um, but yeah, I do think that that social proof is required in order for your business to like succeed at this point. You can't just think about the ad. Um, you have to think beyond the ad. Agreed. Um, okay, let's sum up a little bit about what we talked about because I feel like we hit a little bit a, yeah, a yeah. bunch of different places. So first thing was that we talked about was understanding like the metrics, which is uh, like making sure you understand these metrics from CPM to CTR, the entire funnel you have to have a good view of. And you got to get comfortable with the metrics to be like this cost per click, this is my cost per view, this is my cost per acquisition, all that kind of stuff on a you know daily basis. I looked at them to be like, has something changed in the funnel? Right. Um, we talked about CPMs and how I thought there were rules, but there are no rules. We talked about how um, you know I thought you'd spend $1,000 a day per 1 million people in your audience, which is high these days because most audiences aren't so narrow any longer. Uh, we talked about comments and landing pages and, um, you know, social proof uh, and offers. Um, the one thing I want to talk about more a little bit more is creative, which is um, something that we haven't really touched on. And the hard part here is like, you know, uh, let me date myself again and say seven <laughs> years ago, things were so easy because you're like, you put a static image up. Right. No one is using mobile. Everyone's using desktop. Here's the dimensions for desktop. Go home and have a nice 1200 by 628. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was it. And then it was like, okay, now it's square. Right. Okay, even, that's fine. Now it's square, but you also have to be ready for stories. Yep. Now it's square, you have to be ready for stories, and you got to create something separate for Pinterest, which is a di like different than stories. Right. Now it's, you got to be uh, square, ready for Pinterest, uh, ready for Pinterest, ready for Instagram stories and create something for TikTok. And that thing for TikTok is not what you used in any of your other social media right. platforms. Because the button overlay is different. The button overlay is different. And like the, you know, the Facebook video is probably not the TikTok video that you want, right? Like right. they're probably two very different creatives that you need for that platform, right? Totally. And you might need a different one for YouTube pre-roll at this point. How are, the, how are all the brands that you're working with handling all these creatives? Uh, it's, it's, you know, you gotta have like a creative farm basically. Um, most of the brands we work with have multiple agencies for creative or multiple partners for creative. Uh, they are rarely, I want to say, yeah, the brands that are doing over 50 million are rarely doing creative in-house solely. Um, in-house might be a part of it, but they're usually focused on other things like email or site stuff. Um, you know, like for a lot of the brands we work with, we we handle like one style of creative, but then they have another agency that does, you know, UGC, another agency that does whitelisted creative, another agency that does studio shot creative. Um, and so I guess it kind of depends on like their spend, but most are, yeah, basically farming it out. Um, and how much are they spending? What is the budget for creative? Any idea? Um, it's a good question. Uh, doing some quick math, probably, um, ch -ch -ch -ch. honestly, not that much. Probably one day's worth of ad spend is what they, for the big ones. For a month of like, yeah. for a, okay, gotcha. But, so, um, so if you're spending $20,000 a day, maybe you spend $20,000 on creative per month. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, how often are they updating creative? Um, it's also a good question. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think for some for some brands, it's like, you know, if you find a piece of creative that works, it'll work. There's also different styles of creative. So like um, a good static ad that works could probably work for a while. Um, a good advertorial, we've had some advertorials that have run for three years straight and all we do is comment moderation. Um, and then videos, I don't know. I actually don't know the answer to be honest. My guess is probably three to six weeks, somewhere in there. Yeah, there's... Um... You know, there's some guy I was talking to and he's like, I put up 40 new creatives every week. Yeah. And he's like, I'm probably spending $300,000 a month. And you know him and I'm going to tell you his name right after this uh, podcast. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing spending, f doing 40 creatives a week? Are you crazy? Yeah. That seems like so, you have no idea what's going to work. You have no <laughs> yeah. clue. Yeah. And nothing has worked. Like what's going on here? Yeah. Um, you know, I think that you're right. I think that like, if you can find creatives at work, uh, like a native, I spent $10 million on one creative, mm -hmm. uh, with small variations, like yeah. very, you know, I would capitalize the letter sometimes cause capital letters were in. Sometimes I would have like camel regular case. Um, sometimes I would change numbers to letter. Like, you know, I'd spell out three instead of writing the number three, right. but I'd make those types of variations. Um, 
And I'd spent $10 million on the same creative. Yeah. Uh, and like, it didn't miss a beat. And <laughs> yeah. one day I remember increasing that creative. I was like, this is so, I was spending $800 a day. I remember this so clearly. It was, uh, I even remember like the, I remember doing it. Like, you know, and this was eight years ago. And I literally remember being at the keyboard being like, let me see what happens. Yeah. And I went from $8,000, from $800 a day to $8,000 a day. I 10 x it. Didn't miss a beat. Wow. Like Facebook was like, no problem. And I was like, okay, there's a lot of room for this business to grow, but like the creative just worked. Yeah. And so I think the answer is, look, you're creative. If you have good creative, you can pump a lot of money behind it. If you have to struggle and create creative every week, you yeah, probably have a wrong. creative problem. There, and I also think it's uh, it's definitely a creative problem. It's also a problem of you're probably creating things that are that wouldn't do well organically, which is like that's the mm -hmm. ultimate test. Yeah. And then the other thing is you're probably not hitting on a real pain point. Like you're probably hitting on something that works for a few people, but doesn't work for the majority. That's right. And that's yeah. where I think the the benefits and the positioning and the messaging is huge. Like once you figure that out, you're golden. That is the hardest part. Yeah, that is such a good point. Um, you know, if you're if you're redoing creative every week, you know, your audiences are generally huge on Facebook. That's a 30 million person audience. Yeah. If you're spending a thousand dollars a day. You're not going to exhaust that audience no in a week, yeah, or in a month, for that matter of fact. Right. Like you know, you can spend a lot more money than that. And so, generally, I find like if you're uh, updating creative a lot, it, the problem is you haven't found the creative that's going to work for you long term. And Agreed. it is a little bit of a game of like you have to keep shooting until you find a couple bullets that work. And like uh, you know, uh, it, there's a lot of like magic to this. Like yeah. some of it is you get a lot of positive feedback right out of the gate uh, when it comes to comments or when it comes to ad moderation or like, or like when people are like liking it, sharing it and commenting on it. And Facebook is like, this is a good ad. So we're going to give it a cheaper CPC, a cheaper CPM. Then it just does better for the life of the ad. Right. I knew a guy a, w a while ago who would start a hundred ads of the exact same one, and then he would turn off ninety nine of them, finding out which one ever had which one of those hundred exact same ad. And wow. He's like, this one got all the positive feedback or better positive feedback, so this is going to do the best. And yeah. like statistically significant, he's like, I proved this, and it was statistically significant. That's what matters. Like early positive feedback will result in a cheaper CPA for months, uh, like than a, a negative feedback. Um, and so I find that people are creating way too much creative, like, uh, and they're not understanding that things work and that they should last longer, or they're like, they just haven't found what works so that they can put more dollars behind it. Agreed. Even with our um, clients, like what we've done is we have reduced the number of new creatives we'll produce per month, and yeah. it's more so just iteration. It's like, we'll look in and we'll see, okay, this hook did well, but then we drop, people dropped off. Okay, yeah. keep the hook, iterate on, on the second frame or yeah. the second piece of it. Um, I also think that the, uh, actually, what are your thoughts on like, you know, what actually, do you have something else? Yeah. To say first? The one other metric, sorry yeah. about this. Uh, the go. one other metric that I think is really a good, you were saying, Hey, would this do well organically? Yeah. The one metric that you can monitor, and I don't know what the ratio should be because I do too much comment moderation to have a good ratio, <laughs> which is shares to comments, shares yes. to likes. It should be, uh, you should be seeing shares. Yeah. It should be, um, Man, I forget too, but this is exactly what I would use when uh, I was launching ads. It's like, are the likes and the shares, I think it was close to one-to-one. -one. If they're one-to-one, -one, then you've got something that Good. you can just blow up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you're like, uh, and it's hard to do comments because you're like, this has been going for two months and I've deleted 80% of the comments yeah. and I can't delete, you know, the shares are fine, comments yeah. are bad. Yeah. So you, it's hard to do that barom or that metric, but like um, if you're not seeing any shares on your on your ad, you probably haven't created a great ad because people should want to be like, this solves an issue. There's a problem here. Uh, I want other people to be aware of this. It's a large issue. I'm, uh, you know, I want an aluminum free deodorant. And so I think that um, that's an easy metric to monitor that most people will miss. Do you know that uh, meme that's like the, it's like the bell curve and it's like the two people on the side are kind of like, they look like hobos. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the, in the middle, it's like maybe some buttoned yep. up person. On the two people on the side with ad creative, it's like, just make something people like. Yeah. And in the middle, it's like, we need to have this, we need to have this, we need to have this. But it's like, if you zoom out, especially uh, what made me think of this is the shares. Yeah. If you zoom out, if you create a piece of ad creative or you put something that people trust and enjoy so much that they say, I'm going to put this on my own real estate you've got something that was, that's just going to rip. It's a, yeah, it is magic. And all you have to do is just make something that people want to share on their own. And uh, like, um, 
uh, let me uh, start. Uh, let me tell you this story that I had, and then ask yeah. you a question. I remember when I was starting uh, Native, uh, I worked out of this um, co-working space called the Founders Dojo. Yeah. And it was the shittiest co-working space, and it was amazing. Like, really, real hustler. Like, I think Sam many, had worked out of there how earlier. How many nine-figure exits came out of there? Uh, I can think of three businesses wow. that, like, <laughs> were, uh, that, like, three people have become have been, become worth more than $20 million out of wow. that place, out of, like, eight people that worked out of there. And three of them I lost touch with. Yeah. So, like, I don't know what, so out of five, three of them uh, have become very wealthy. Um, and... One of the things that, uh, wait, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, oh, th this guy came by and he's like, let me teach you about Facebook ads. And he ran this business called Ad Expresso. Oh, And a yes. long time ago, there were uh, SaaS businesses, yeah, that's right, that would uh, help you with um, uh, with Facebook ads. One was called Ad Expresso, another one was called Nanigans. Yep. Nanigans is a big one. Ad Expresso guy came in and he's like, here are two different uh, uh, creatives. One was like a stick figure of a woman and one was like this beautiful woman that was a real photo. And he's like, which creative do you think did better? And there was like eight of us and we're all like the beautiful woman. Um, and he's like, no, it was the stick figure. Yeah. And I rem I still remember that moment because I was like, okay, so nobody knows what works here. Yeah. Uh, because everyone would think that, uh, it, not just in this in the Founders Dojo, but like no one understands what works because everyone would imagine, you ask 99 marketers, 100 marketers, 99, actually all 100 will say the beautiful woman and not the stick figure and the stick figure worked. Yeah. That was really like telling to me because afterwards I was always aiming for stick figures. But is there a pattern to creative that works? Like, can you run creative and then be like, you know what, I'm getting better at creative because I understand this works and this doesn't work? Or is it sort of always, you're throwing stuff at the wall that, to see what sticks? I think you're throwing stuff at the wall specific to your brand. Uh, like there's some things that work well for some brands that just don't work well for others. Um, and I don't think you can, like, I think the, the fundamentals of you got to have a good hook and a good message and good positioning. And, um, you know, you got to show the product within the first five seconds. You got to show the product in action. I think those all are true, but it's hard to know, like, you know, you should have, a, a, like when people at Facebook used to always say this, put your logo in the bottom right corner of your ad, video ads. It's good for, it's like, no, it's not. It doesn't do shit. Yeah. You know, there's all these things that are, um, that are kind of like on a case by case basis. I think, like if it's if it's a uh, Everlane or uh, Tom Ford, I could totally see that logo in the bottom right. That makes sense. That's like that's just fashion. Yeah. But uh, you know, it doesn't work for selling flavored water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah hit you're right. Um, uh, at espresso, by the way, did you ever use that? Yeah, I did. Dude, that was. I think I spent more time in ad espresso than I did in ads manager. ad manager. Their analytics back in the day were phenomenal. They were the only guys to tell you what interests, like what your CPA was per interest or what your click-through rate was per yeah. interest. I forgot what it was. Because otherwise Facebook would be like, you have all these interests. This is how much your CPA was. And you're like, what was like, you know, what was it? Was it psychology? Was it trees? What, yeah. what was the interest that made this work? And they, there's also like one trick that I discovered in ad espresso, which I think majority of people never discovered and still don't do today but it still works today, which is, you know, your CPM is a combination of how is your creative doing? How does your creative resonate? Uh, what is the positive or negative feedback? But it's also, uh, what is your page score? Like how does Facebook interpret your page uh, being, you know, do people like the content you're putting out basically? And also, are you shipping packages on time? If you're delaying packages, you get hit on your page score and that lowers your, um, your credibility and increases your CPM. All that said, one thing I used to do was, uh, so Ad Espresso had this feature where you could auto boost the latest post on, uh, on your Facebook page. And so um, I didn't do it through there, but what I would do is, you know, for this, so this was for Hint. So I would go to, uh, I would think, okay, the Hint consumer, who am I trying to attract? Somebody who reads Pop Sugar, Well and Good, Bustle, something like that. I'd go to their Facebook page. I'd say, I'd see what performed well organically for them. You know, they post probably 300 pieces of content a day because they're also throwing shit at the wall. Sure. But they would have like one or two posts a day that would just go viral. Yeah. I would grab that. I would take the URL, load it up and sketch. So this would be happening at 5 p.m. For the next day, I would schedule it at like 6.22 a.m. The at same 11. post from the bustle. Yeah. I would find three or four articles. I would schedule them for 6.22 a.m., 11.38 a.m., you know, 2.33 p.m., and 7.33 p.m. 
all kind of odd times. I don't know why, but I felt like it performed better because uh, Facebook just knew it wasn't scheduled. And uh, so I would schedule these posts in, uh, in the Facebook page. I would go to the scheduled posts. I would take the post IDs and put it into an engagement campaign in Ads Manager. And I would run engagement ads to the post that's scheduled. So the, it would run as sort of like a dark post. And then the second it shows up on the page, it's got, you know, 400 likes and 35 comments and, you know, 200 shares. And that boosts your page score? Is that the goal? Yeah. Basically, the page engagement goes way up and your CPMs go down as a result. Wow. So that you, combination plus yeah. the ad moderate or the comment moderation was like the key to low CPM. Does that still work today or no? That I think it matter. still does. I haven't run it, but I would imagine it still does because I think it's still calculated the same way. So page engagement, so basically you try and find a viral post, run ads to it. Yeah, you go find something that already did well. You don't even have to guess. Uh, you know, let's say it's like seven workouts to do on vacation. You throw that in, you write some caption. doesn't have to relate to your brand at all, but you run it toward uh, the same like prospecting audience you're going after. Uh, and then the second that post goes live, one, it has engagement, which really doesn't matter. Yeah. But what you get is all this positive engagement and you're kind of building that middle funnel um, engaging retargeting. That's super interesting. I never, yeah, I never did that. That is yeah. really interesting. Um, before we wrap up though, yeah. I do want to know, cause, uh, cause I think I know where your head is, but what are your thoughts on all, all the, you know, like this is an on brand. We can't run this. This isn't on brand. I hate those people. Yeah. I want to like, when people say that I'm like, I'm making money is my brand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's my personal brand. I can't do anything. Good. Like that's everything actually. Like I'm always like, this, uh, I, I think two things, uh, you know, a, a glib comment is probably making money is always on brand, although that, I do think that's true. And I've said that in boardrooms with like, you know, executives of very big businesses where I'm like, I always thought we'd like to make money here. Yeah. Like there's this great episode of The Office where Michael Scott's like, sometimes it makes sense to lose money, you know, for tax purposes. And the, his accountant, his name's Oscar, he goes, I did the math and in this instance, it makes sense to make money. Like uh, <laughs> that's what I, like when people are like, this isn't on brand, I was like, I did the math and it turns out I like more, uh, more money is better. Yeah. Um, but the, the honest answer is you build it, like, you know, people talk about how great a brand native is. The reason that it's great, we spent zero dollars on brand marketing until north of $50 million in revenue. And that was because I was like, our brand is gonna be built by people getting this product in their hands and loving it mm -hmm. and using it and raving about it to their friends and to their family and through really good customer service when they have problems. Like no one, you know, there's nothing that you could do to change Comcast brand. Like their yeah. customer service is so bad, yeah. you know. No out of home campaigns. Exactly. Fix that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you have great customer service, uh, great product, rabid fans, um, you know, you will build a brand just by getting people to use your product. Yeah. And no brand has ever been built with five people like you know using that. Like you know, you don't have anybody using it. You don't have a brand. Right. Uh, like you can't have. You can't be like oh, we have two thousand. We're doing a million dollars a year, but our brand is so strong. By definition, your brand isn't strong. Right. You don't have any sales. Right. And so uh, I was always really an advocate of like doing what's best to drive a lower low CPA so that you could build a real business and that would create a brand in and of itself. Yeah. I remember we had, um, we would send product to a bunch of influencers. Yeah. And we had one who, uh, you know, he was excited to get his package on his YouTube channel. He like took a, a massive knife, stabbed the box, ripped it open, took out a bottle of Hint and just like poured it on his face. And he was like, this is amazing. And we started running it and our CPA dropped by 75% immediately. And um, we had this CMO who lasted probably a month. And he was like, you have to take this down. This is so off brand. This is ruining the brand. And I'm like, dude, this is a, this is a $20 CPA. Yeah. What's wrong with this? Yeah, yeah. But uh, the on brand versus performance marketing conversation, like, uh, you know, it was so frustrating probably like six years ago. Uh, when I was buying all the ads, it was always like, well, this is off brand. It's like, dude, your on brand shit makes no money. Yeah. Like your on brand thing makes no sense. It looks like a poster and uh, no one cares about what this is. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, it was like for me, I was running the ads and I didn't have a CMO. So it was a lot easier because yeah. no one was like, I'm like, this, I'm like, this isn't going to make money. It's off brand. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I do think that like, um, you know, the, like, Today, back then, it was like Facebook. Everyone says was easier, and I, I can't attest to that. But let's I, let's say it was. 
that would mean that today you don't have the luxury of asking that question. Yeah. Like it's a war out there and everyone is armed with like, you know, sophisticated weapons and um, everyone is a deadly. You don't have the, uh, you know, um, where you don't have the room to be like, let's think about what's on brand. You're like, look, this is a war. Yeah. It's, a, you know, a knife fight when we get out yeah. there. People Everybody are trying to kill us. Yeah. yeah. Like we don't have uh, the ability to go out there and being like, hey guys, <laughs> uh, you know, don't shoot us. We're good yeah. people. No, uh, the first thing We're I cute. do when I see that is I shoot that person. <laughs> yeah. you know? and I'm like, all right, everyone take his weapons. Yeah, exactly. So don't uh, do that. That's uh, yeah. so funny. Okay, so before we wrap up, Tell me what your main takeaway, like if, if you're, if you listen to this episode, you're doing $10 million a year in sales or yeah. less. What, uh, what should you think about? What should you take away? Should I take away, okay, b- making an offer and social proof? Like, tell me what your takeaways are that you're like, let me implement these things first. Yeah. I would say, uh, social proof is huge. Yeah. Um, and that's across social yep. Google site. I think, um, comment moderation, another yep. huge one. Uh, I think the advertorials we kind of lightly touched on it but yeah. i think that has a lot of legs for the right product and i think um you know i think focusing on like finding your one funnel that works before you try other things like yeah. don't throw shit at the wall find something that works like intentionally write down 25 reasons somebody's going to buy your product actually go into reviews and call customers and write down 25 reasons they bought your product and then test funnels off of those 25. And I'm, I guarantee you, you will find one. I think that's work. such a great, that's a great piece of advice. Um, you need to under, like, you need to build funnels that matter. Yeah. And so like, that's gotta involve, like, you can't just be like, this is what I think matters. You yeah. need to, like people, when we started the business, when I started Native, I was like, only men are, men are gonna buy this product. And within like three months, I was like, I got the agenda wrong. Yeah. Uh, and like, that's a pretty fundamental thing to get wrong. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay, well now it's all women. And, um, you know, you got to understand who your customers are and that's going to happen as you get some sales and speaking to them is a great idea and b- building funnels based around them and like, do it in a sophisticated way. Be like, okay, uh, like, uh, here's the two things I would take away. One yeah. is like, make sure you understand your funnel, like set up your Facebook ad manager from like CPM to CTR to CPC to view, add to cart, initiate checkout purchase. Mm-hmm. So you can see what does my funnel look like? And if I get holes in this funnel, like what'll happen? You know, I, I remember there were days where I was like, what's going on? Why is the CPM so high? Like the first year that I was doing this, and I was like, I didn't know the Q4 would result in like an increase in CPMs, which seems obvious to me now. Yeah. But in 2015 or 2016, I was new. I didn't know what I was doing. That didn't seem that obvious. So like, you know, uh, and I was like, why is the CPM the issue? Like every, I was like, everything else looks right. It's the CPM and the ads haven't changed, but it was just Q4. Right. And so like, when you have that, you have a better understanding of where the problems are. And so I'd start there. Uh, I think the second thing I I would take away is creative is critical. Yeah. Make sure you get this thing right. You, you know, if you think you need to launch 40 creatives a week, it's because you haven't found the creatives that are going to work for you. You can be a lot calmer with creatives once you find things that are going to work for you. And, um, you know, the crux, the, the, you know, the other side of that coin is what you said, which is build funnels that matter. Don't just, you know, test things that matter. So if you're building a funnel and you're like, this is resonating, but with this audience or like older women or younger men, like, you know, you know, you match the audience to the offer and build creatives around that, like, right. uh, uh, and test things that matter. Um, you know, like I feel like a lot of people are just like I'm throwing stuff at the wall. I have no yeah, idea I think what works too, and what doesn't work. It feels like you're doing more when you're throwing stuff at the wall yeah. versus like you know setting up a very intentional funnel that might take you three days, four days yeah. to get from start to finish. It's a lot harder to do and to focus on than oh, but this landing page app here they they have templates from another brand. I could just try that and see what happens. Yeah, not gonna work. Doesn't for work. You. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think I think that's the the final thing I'll say is you need to have tenacity here. Yeah, which is. You're right. It's going to take five days to set up the right funnel that you want because it's it not easy. And then it might completely fail. And then it might come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then you're going to take three to five days of testing it and you're like, I just wasted a week of my life. Yeah. And then you're going to have to do it again and it's going to fail. And right. you're going to have to do it again and it's going to fail. And now you're like, what's going on? This business isn't going to work. Right. And, um, that's when you need tenacity of being like, hey, um, I need to see if this, like, I need to keep building these funnels to find something that's going to work. Um, and in fact, if you're launching a new business, I would think about that funnel before I thought about that, when I thought about the product. 100%. I'd be like, this is the product I'm choosing. Can I build a funnel around this? If not, this isn't the right product. Because yeah. it's going to be just as, like, it's going to be critical to your growth early on. Couldn't agree more. 
Um, okay, I guess those are the takeaways that we've got from uh, our paid social episode six. Yeah, that that's was a wrap. Fun. Yeah, that was fun. We're going to do another episode about television later on this season, which yes. I'm excited about. Um, and uh, so stay tuned. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next time to cut through the noise in CPG, retail, and e-commerce. And if you enjoyed this episode, then why not share it with a friend? And be sure to subscribe on whatever platform you listen to your podcasts on. 